This represents chelation. Correct. I want to know what chelation means. Sure. Um, this center here is the mineral, the silver is the mineral, and these structures around this mineral mm -hmm. are the amino acid. And if you take, for instance, your hand, and you have your tip of your finger mm -hmm. to your thumb, and you pretend you're taking a marble and holding it there, that's one end of the amino acid bending and the other end of the amino acid bending to bond to that. And then when you take your other hand, in this fashion, you mm -hmm. have a chelate. The idea is that these amino acids take and bond to the mineral and mm -hmm. keep it intact as if it were a natural dipeptide so that things that would happen to salt forms in the GI system do not happen to this. Uh, this does not come apart, whereas calcium carbonate or ferrous sulfate mm -hmm. come apart. The iron in the ferrous sulfate comes apart from the sulfate and is just a charged iron in the sulfate is a charged sulfate. And then the iron is absorbed in a different fashion than a chelate would be. The chelate would stay intact and be absorbed further down in the GI tract and over a much longer span of the intestine, giving it a higher potential for absorption. So it's not as affected by stomach acid? Right. The thing is, it's, it's got a stability constant that keeps it from coming apart in the pHs encountered ah. in the GI system. And why that is important is for a number of reasons. One of the big ones is, of course, absorption. It increases absorption. But number two, a lot of your inorganic minerals, for instance, ferrous sulfate, mm -hmm. iron, will mm -hmm. cause constipation. Uh, zinc will make people in sulfate form nauseated if taken in, in higher doses in particular. Okay. And the chelate, because the mineral is not exposed in charged form in the gut the way it would be in a salt form, you don't have those side effects. You don't have the tolerance problems because of the chelate structure. Mm -hmm. Typical clinical studies will show you the chelates can be absorbed anywhere from two to four times more effectively than the salt form. And what's interesting, too, is that typically the more your body needs the mm -hmm. mineral, the higher your absorption is going to be from the chelate. It's very nicely regulated that way. And uh, so because it's absorbed in a wider range of the gut, mm -hmm. you know, number one, that causes it to be absorbed better, but also your salt form of mineral can be impacted by other things in your diet to decrease the absorption of such. For instance, if you take your multi-mineral in a salt form with your breakfast, and many mm -hmm. people do, they'll right. take their supplement first thing in the morning and they're eating their cereal. Well, if the cereal's got a lot of fiber in it, which mm -hmm. hopefully it would, <laughs> the thing is, the salt form, when it ionizes, there's things called phytates in your cereal that are fibrous that bind to that ionized form of calcium or ionized form of manganese or whatever the mineral might be and form an insoluble, unabsorbable compound and pass the minerals through out to the colon and out. So the fiber absorption. takes it out. Right. And that won't happen with the chelate because this does not ionize, mm -hmm. so it doesn't become uh, exposed, if you will, mm -hmm. to phytates. Also, a lot of your minerals will block the absorption of one another if you're in salt form. For instance, calcium carbonate will block the absorption of zinc from sulfate. Mm -hmm. uh, iron uh, sulfate will block the absorption of copper, and copper will be blocked by zinc. If you take inorganic minerals together, the one that's in the highest concentration is going to get the most attention by your body to drag it through. So you could be taking a nice multi-mineral but not doing yourself as much good as you think. All right. Well, thank you, Max. Sure.